Hello everyone and welcome back to another edition of High School Roundup. As always, I'm John Sakaguchi. Joined with me is always my partner, her her John Safe. I almost said Tom, um, who's back in the control room this week. He uh, appreciate having Tom on for us last week as uh, figure his last year along with mine. Had to have Tom on at some point in time. But uh, Safe, Abe, how you doing today, man? Oh, I'm doing great. You know, it was uh, kind of cold this morning. I went out. Uh, we're recording this on Tuesday. I went and voted today, so uh, just did my uh, my democratic duties for the year. And now uh, I'm ready to talk about football. <laughs> Yeah, I did the same before or the show. Oh, uh, but uh, something we we all still have to talk about. It last week, first round of playoffs, a lot of good games that we saw. Others uh, somewhat surprised to us, and there were some upsets last week that we got to talk about. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Like you said, uh, a lot more closer games than we expected. But I mean, it is the playoffs, so that's uh, I guess that is to be expected. The level of play is always a little bit higher, but. Uh, there are definitely some good games I can't wait to talk about. Yeah, and speaking of which, we do have some highlights to look at. So let's take a look at those from our friends at South Union Township and, and at WMBS. Laurel Highlands versus Western Beaver. Or, or let's see, take a look at those highlights now. The broken plays when he scrambles around. Second and five, Tristan Baker getting the carry here, trying to cut right back up the middle, and Baker breaks the tackle. Baker inside the 40-35. Baker, his biggest run of the year, down. Second and nine, Gallagher back out of the gun, triple right set. He's going to roll to the near side, now throw, high pass, diving effort, lay you, did he hang on? Play clock down to 10. Rodney takes the snap. Has some time, looks middle, end zone, and hanging on. Big for the Keandre DeShields fan. First and goal now from the six-yard line. Gallagher pulls it down, looks to run across the right side of the line. Blockers out in front, looks for the pylon, dives forward. Did he get in? Yes, he did. News and notes gave us some excellent information this week on West Allegheny. He upped in to put it up. Man open in the flat, far side. Noden Tracy, some running room, and Bob lost ball. the football. Oh. Ball comes loose. Antoine Black picks it up there for the Mustangs. Black down on the far side, and Antoine Black... Takes it back into West Allegheny territory. You know, Twin receivers to each side. Option run. Gallagher again inside the 10. And you called it, Steve. Yeah. Into the end zone for another Mustang touchdown. This time from 16 yards out. Just pizza. They had their first child yesterday as well. So happy time for the crew over at Mama Ruka's. This evening interception. an interception right across the middle. Leland Lehu inside the 35-30. Lehu still on his feet. Down the near sideline. Can he get a pick six? No. Pulled down inside the 10. Week against Connellsville. Clean snap coming back. Harry's kick from 26. Plenty of distance. It's good. From Leland Leahy, second and 10 now from the 45. Upton in trouble again. Throws from traffic. He gets out of it. Good completion on the far side and down the far sideline. To return this, if uh, now this could be dangerous if he doesn't kick it far enough. 51 yard attempt. Good leg. And it's going to come up short and it will. So no good on the. And here you go, Steve. Good call, and it's a loose football, and West Allegheny came very close to recovering. It's still loose. I think they did recover. I mean, I just don't understand oh, it. He's in a rush at West Allegheny, showing blitz. Mustangs with a first and ten. The goal on the inside. Big hole here. Jaden Tucker inside the 25, inside the 20, and Tucker. And, uh... Trying to go two for two tonight. Leahy puts it down, and this one hooking left. Did it sneak through? Yes, it did. So Radcliffe... Contributors here, and they, you know, they just have to get some confidence. Second out and of that. seven, big Whoops. run, and we're going to get a West Allegheny touchdown. That's Cornell taking it all the way, and West Allegheny on the scoreboard for the first time tonight. Harry can control him a little better than I can. Another low line drive, kick, plenty of yeah. distance, and he snuck it through again. It's third and two, not third and thirty-eight, as your graphic might say. It's going to be upped an inside run with a big hole here, breaking it down just shy of the forty. Winded after all that energy expended on the, that scramble. Looking to put it up here again. In trouble. Looks end zone near side. Pass in the back of the uh, end zone. Was Gallagher. it caught? Yes, it was. Gallagher almost Absolutely. able to. Mustangs are ready for it this time. Lambert puts it down on the near side. Ball comes loose. Got a fall on it if you're Laurel Highlands. Scrum is on. You had Keandre there. I think he was able to. No reason to put it up. Gallagher oh, fumbled, fumbled it. And West Allegheny got it. Bounced right into the stomach. Of Nick Longo. In the backfield. Single coverage on the near side. Upton takes the snap. Looked across the middle. What happened to it? It got knocked down. And the Mustangs have it on a run back. Parker and that Hoff. is Parker Hoff. He's going to take it in for a Laurel Highlands touchdown. 
I knew they were going to get one of those sooner or later. Side again. Upton out of the shotgun. Looking to throw. Has time. Now men in his face. Looks end zone intercepted. Picked off by the Mustangs. Looking for a long run back. It's Keandre. Keandre to Shields has the 30. And he's going to break it. Keandre. He's going to go over 100 yards here for a Mustang touchdown. He's going to walk it in from five yards out. Wow. It's back-to-back -back weeks. That's uh, a probably a recipe for a victory. Fourth and four, got to have it play for West Allegheny, and a low pass. Was it hauled in? Referees getting together, and they're going to give him a catch. Ah, oh, wow. And Laurel Highlands with their second playoff win in school history, the first ever home playoff win as they knock off the West Allegheny Indians 44-15. to We'll take a quick timeout. And there you have it, folks, your final score. Laurel Highlands 44, West Allegheny Sorry, I, I said I had Western Beaver earlier, or, but West Allegheny, 15. And, and I want to say a shout out to Laurel Highlands as that is the first playoff win at home for the Mustangs. Uh, Rodney Gallagher and company, he once again, and going out there er, doing their thing along with the Shields, Black, and, and a few other er, names that I could go on and on about that Mustang roster. Yeah, I mean, a big win for them. To move on, especially in a uh, almost a 30-point win at home, always good to see. And like you said, their first playoff win at home. So huge congratulations to them for getting that win and now moving on. And, and I mean, in a lot of a lot of rough game aims ahead, especially with this upcoming match up against and Central Catholic. But we'll talk about that later on on down on in the show when we look at the playoff bracket. But we got other scores to take a look at. at. So John, what do we got? Starting off, we had Chestnut Ridge facing off against Westinghouse. Westinghouse able to get a big win in that one, 48-15. And then Butler took on McDowell, and McDowell absolutely smokes Butler in that game. 62-7 to is your final score. Yeah, moving on here, we take a look at the next set of scores. As we have uh, North Hills taking on Bethel Park in a close one, and a two-point difference. Bethel Park moves on in the 5A play, uh, playoff play. 19 to 17, staying in a 5A bracket. Another close one, and just separated by a field goal. Upper Slate Claire knocks off Gateway, 24 to 21 in that bracket. And then moving on, two more games that were kind of blowouts. Mars McKeesport, McKeesport still dominant in this year so far. You get a uh, shutout Mars in that game, 43 nothing. And then Blackhawk taking on Armstrong, Armstrong able to get a big win in that game, 39 to seven. And moving on here, Air staying in. And moving down to 3A brackets now, uh, Old South Park Arc took on Shady Side Academy he here, er, 35 to 14 in this one. And then East Allegheny, he, who limped into the playoffs, upset at Mount Pleasant and at home, um, 42 to 39. And East Allegheny is going to move on here. Er. And then we had uh, two close games in this one. Latrobe faced off against Highlands, and Latrobe able to get. A big win, 28 to 21, and then we had Hampton taking on Montour, and Montour would get a one-point victory in that one, 34 to 33. And moving on now, oh, Deer Lakes goes to Beaver area uh, in this one, and as Deer Lakes pulls off the victory, 17 to three, and then South Moreland and traveled take on, on the Trojans of West Mifflin. But West Mifflin stands tall at home, putting down the Scotty East, 54 to 28. And then moving on, Washington faced off against Sarah Catholic, looking for revenge earlier in the season. They were able to do so, getting a huge win in that game, 49 to 21. And then Western Beaver faced off against Ligonier Valley, and another close game that Ligonier Valley able to pull off the victory in that one, 27 to 20. Moving on, staying in at 2A a football. All Keystone Oaks took on Apollo Ridge. It's in a close one, only separated by seven points. Keystone Oaks stands tall all at home, 21 to 14. And then McGuffey, he played host to Mohawk in the first round on another close battle. Old 34 29, your final score are there. Moving on, Stow Rocks and continuing their dominant end to the season, getting a, a shutout win over Riverside, 29 to nothing. And then Burrow faced off against the Shannock. And the Shannock able to get a giant win in that game, 48 to six. Moving on now, all down to 1A football. All California traveled to Southside Beaver, er, and unfortunately for California, the road trip was all for nothing. And as Southside Beaver stands tall in this one, 34 to three. 
And then Carmichael's took Ravel to take on Laurel, but the Mighty Mike's not so mighty this week as they fall to Laurel 53 to 8. And then we had Clarendon facing off against Our Lady of Sacred Heart and Olsh fall in that game. The host fall to Clarendon 45 to 19. And then Jeanette face off against Bishop Canavan, and Bishop Canavan continuing their fantastic year this year, get a huge win, 63 to 14. Staying here in 1A football, all as we move on to the next set of scores, there's Manesson and Fort Cherry, a, a barn burner of a game, no defense here, but Fort Cherry pulls away with the victory as they win this one, 56 to 42. Union goes on the road to take on Burgettstown, and Burgettstown, who has been dominant this season, Falls to Union in an upset at that 7-10 matchup, 32-7. And then two interesting games that we're going to talk about a little bit more. Rochester takes off Greensburg Central Catholic and upsets Greensburg Central Catholic in that game. Rochester able to get the win 36-15. And then Leechburg taking on Mapletown and the Mapes continuing their perfect year. So far able to get the win 41-28. to That'll do it for the scores, but John and... A lot of good ones that air. I mean, and we talked about old teams playing in some close matchups. Uh, didn't expect that one and with Mapletown to become a barn burner and still is somewhat as close as it was. Is Mapletown on 11 and 0 right now? Yeah, they're looking very good. And uh, for the most part in these games, uh, the teams that were the higher seed ended up uh, getting the win. Uh, a couple of close ones, but the biggest one. Uh, was the Greensburg Central Catholic. Yeah, uh, I am surprised in that one. Undefeated in conference play, only two losses on the season. And I was surprised to see that Greensburg Central Catholic fell oh, in that matchup up. I thought that was going to be a an easy, a, um, all right, you're moving on to the next round win. But uh, no, oh, Greensburg Central Catholic going home after or another first round loss. And I mean, that's the beauty of the playoffs, right? And that, is, that even though these teams are higher seed, there is no easy games when it gets to this stretch, and that just shows right there that Rochester came out. They were the better team, and they were able to get a big win. And another matchup up while we're staying at 1A, a, uh, Clariton versus Our Lady of Sacred Heart. We know Olsh won that matchup earlier this year, er, and I was thinking maybe is history going to repeat itself? Uh, we all saw what happened last year er, when Olsh took on Clariton in the playoffs, and Olsh upset them going to the, the uh, Whipfield title game at Heinz Field that year. Yeah, and then, the, but this time, like you said, Clarendon uh, just not only were they able to get the win, it was a dominant win, almost 30 point victory in that game, and just did what they had to do uh, to bounce back and able to get that win against the team and Olsh that were, I believe they were close in seeding, but it was a higher seed matchup nonetheless. So technically yeah. an upset, but at, at the, the end same of the day, time, big win for Yeah, and, and then moving back up to two, a Keystone Oaks and Apollo Ridge. You and I, I went back and forth on that game, saying who was going to end up coming out of that one. And but Keystone Oaks again standing tall. Uh, we see why uh, they were one of the favorite or to win the conference. Uh, as we all know, oh, that was a tough conference to play in this year. Or, I mean, with Wash Hot Eye and uh, um, Stowe Rocks and McGuffey, he, those teams once again and being a big benefactor. Yeah, a ton of good teams in that conference, and I guess that kind of. Uh... Um, helps you in these types of scenarios where you're playing all these very, very, very good teams, and it, it, it like simulates playoff games for you when you have to face off against the likes of Washington and Stowe Rocks and all those other schools in that conference, and that's how you're able to close out close games like this one, which was kind of surprising because I feel like even though these teams were kind of close in a record, I feel like uh, Apollo Ridge hasn't been up to the level that Keystone Oaks has been this year. But I mean, Apollo Ridge did a great job of keeping this one close and almost getting the win in that one. But uh, Keystone Oaks able to fend, that on, uh, fend them off and able to win it. Yeah, and then the last one I want to talk about for, uh, before we go to break, uh, Washington and Sarah Catholic. Washington limping into the, pl into the playoffs. We, uh, you and I both were questioning how good was is Wash High going to play this week? And uh, well, we got an answer. Or as they showed up and got some revenge against Sarah Catholic. Yeah, it just seems crazy to me that Wash High coming into this, like you said, kind of limping in, uh, didn't really have a great uh, regular season, which in my lifetime has uh, pretty much never been the case. They're always a dominant, dominant That's, team. I was going to say, hey, I can, hey, when it comes to Wash High, I, it's always the, you think, ink Wash High football, you think undefeated in playoff runs and, Good, good football games, but they took a couple hard losses this season, yeah, and, and 
won to Sarah Catholic, I believe, as well earlier yeah, on. Yeah, uh, week, week two of the season. And, I mean, a non-conference matchup against Sarah Catholic, and uh, which Sarah Catholic also limping into the playoffs after taking that big loss to Steel Valley uh, two weeks ago. Yeah, but uh, Wash High able to uh, right their wrongs, able to get that win, and it was a huge win. And big for them, like, like we talked about, a team that is uh, historically so very, very, very good. So I can kind of see... Uh, potentially them building, like using this game as a momentum builder into uh, their next week's matchup that we'll talk about later. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we're going to uh, take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to ha have the playoff bracket. It's for this coming week. Eek. So don't go anywhere or stay in tune to the second round on matchup up episode of High School Roundup. We'll be right back after this. Do you love sports? Then you should know about STEM. Because maximizing nutrition, analyzing peak muscle performance, calculating the perfect shot, and more are all made possible by science, technology, engineering, and math. In fact, there are more careers than ever in sports science. So if you have a passion for sports, then think about getting involved in STEM and improve everyone's game on and off the field. Get inspired at SheCanSTEM.com. Welcome back to High School Roundup, everyone, on, on the second round playoff edition. And as we, we get ready to look at the brackets, say a lot of good matchups last week. We got some even better ones this week. I, th I don't think we're going to see as many blowout scores as we did in last week's games, but I think we're going to see a lot out of close, tight-knit, potentially a field goal or less uh, difference in this week. Yeah, I mean, the... Uh... <clears throat> the teams are getting closer and closer in terms of uh, skill as you move uh, further and further on. So, like you said, we're going to see a lot more closer games, and uh, closer games are always very, very, very good games. So I'm excited to see what uh, what this next week has in store for us. Yeah, and we got a couple of schools that we've talked about in, the area, uh, in state playoff play. So let's take a look look at the playoff bracket. It's John. What we got? Uh, starting off, we had uh, on the single one uh, A left side of the bracket. Uh, moving on, Bishop Canavan will take on Clarendon in that matchup 1-9. And then 4-5 matchup, Mapletown and Southside. So that left side of the bracket is going to be heating up. Yeah, moving on over to the right side now. Uh, all <clears throat> Laurel will take on number 10, Union, after they upset at Burgettstown last week. Rochester, who also pulled off the big upset against Greensburg Central Catholic, will take on number 6, Fort Cherry, which I think could be an interesting matchup. Yeah, the 14 seed moving on. And moving on to the double A on the left side of the bracket. Steel Valley had a bye last week, and awaiting them will be McGuffey after their win over Mohawk. And then the Shannock, after the win over Burrow, will take on Washington at 4 12 matchup on the left side. So, two, the, both of these games on this side are going to be very, very good. Yeah, definitely going to keep an eye, eye on that Washington and one. Moving on to the right side of the bracket now. Uh, Beaver Falls, who had a bye last week, will take on uh, Ligonier Valley. And the, and the conference champion and Stowe Rocks will take on conference rival Keystone Oaks in a rematch from earlier this season where Stowe Rocks barely escaped that one. And I think, I think we talked about that. It was like a field goal difference. So let's keep an eye on that matchup for sure. That's going to be a good one. Moving on to the Triple A left side of the bracket. Bell Vernon had a bye last week's and their opponent will this week will be uh, East Allegheny after their win over Mount Pleasant and then Freeport who also had a bye last week their opponent uh, will be West Mifflin after their big win over Southmoreland last week and yeah, moving on now to the right side uh, Avonworth Earth who also had a bye uh, the conference champion there moves on to take on Beaver area 
<clears throat> and then Elizabeth Forward, or who also had a bot, I takes on Shady uh, Academy, and I think this should be an interesting matchup in that one. Yeah, it's going to be a one to look out for. Moving on to the 4A left side of the bracket, Aliquippa had a bye last week, and, and this week they'll face off against Montour after their win against Hampton. Uh, Aliquippa is looking dangerous this year. And then Armstrong uh, moving on after the win against Blackhawk. They'll face off against McKeesport in that 4-5 matchup on that left side of the bracket. I mean, that is one that we're going to uh, definitely keep a close eye on. Yeah, especially after McKeesport took that big loss to Thomas Jefferson a couple weeks ago. Uh, McKeesport bouncing back big time in that one. Moving on to the right side of the bracket. Central Valley had a bye last week. They'll take on Laurel Highlands. The Mustangs looking to keep... Keep their playoff dreams alive, along with Rodney Gallagher and company. He, and then the other one, Thomas Jefferson, also had a bye last week. They will take on Greater Latrobe oh, in another conference rematch. Uh, TJA pulling off the victory earlier this year here at home. Yeah, and that was an upset we didn't really talk about as much earlier on. Uh, Greater Latrobe, the 11th seed, able to uh, beat the number six seed Highlands. But moving on to the 5A bracket, just the entire bracket is their only were eight teams in this one. Bethel Park uh, able to get the win over North Hills. They'll face off against Upper St. Clair after their win against Gateway. And then Pine Richland, the two seed, will face off against Woodland Hills. Woodland Hills able to get a big win over Franklin Regional. That, uh, that is an upset and a half right there. The six seed and Woodland Hills able to get the three seed of Franklin Regional out. So it'll be a one, five, two, six matchup on the five A bracket. And moving on now to the six A bracket. It, nobody played last week. So we're in the second round now. Oh, all for, well, technically, the North Allegheny will take on Canaan Mac, and Mount Lebanon will take on Central Catholic. Uh, Mount Lebo oh, and Central Catholic played each other earlier this year. Here and Central Catholic it came away with the victory. So you're gonna have to keep an eye on that one. And, and same with North Allegheny and, and Canaan Mac. North Allegheny won that one, and so you have to imagine. And, and Canaan Mac's looking for some payback. Yeah, and that's it for our brackets here in the uh, WPIO playoffs. But, I mean, there's a lot of very, very good matchups. I think the first one that I wanted to take a, a look at and talk about was that rematch in the AA right side against uh, Stowox versus Keystone Oaks. And, uh, I mean, both teams coming out of that conference um, very tightly contested throughout the whole year, and then they're finally facing off against each other once again. Yeah, that's what I mean. And we looked at, at, the, at bracket, and we saw all oh, how it could shake out. Oh, potentially we could see another or er, er, uh, er conference matchup later on, but Wash High would have to do some um, a lot of fighting to get it back into the, the Whitfield title game and take on uh, either Keystone Oaks or er, McGuffey and potentially uh, Stowe Rocks. Yeah, I mean, that, the, it would have to be a long, long way to get to that point, but there's plenty of good matchups. I think uh, one thing I'm interested to see is all these teams that came off the buys last week, which I'm about, it's like teams like Steel Valley and Bell Vernon and Aliquippa, these teams who uh, have been great so far this season, were able to get that last week off. How are they going to bounce back into this a game like this? I mean, Steel Valley facing off against McGuffey in that matchup. I mean, McGuffey has been fantastic all year, but Still Rocks, or not Still Rocks, uh, Steel Valley have been on another level and uh, it's going to be interesting to see if they're able to maintain that coming off of a bye. Yeah, and then the other team I'm going to keep an eye on that's coming off a bye this week, I just want to see how they're going to come out and play, is Avonwar Earth, who we uh, we didn't expect to, to come up with, uh, have the, the season that they did, pulling a two seed out this year. Here, so you got to wonder how they're going to play against Beaver area this week. Yeah, and on that same side of the bracket as well, Elizabeth Ford, uh, after that loss to Bell Vernon, fell to, from the first seed to the three seed, and then they faced off. They're going to face off against Shady Side after their bye. So I mean, that's going to be another great matchup. That uh, AAA right side of the bracket has uh, four really, really good teams left, and uh, you can see all of them winning their games and moving on. Yeah, and the other one to watch out for, or moving up to 4A, Aliquippa, the defending Whipple champions, uh, I believe also oh, state champions last year. Here was the Quips. Uh, <clears throat> once again, and back to defend their title all in the Whipple playoffs. Very dangerous team to watch out for. Or, so I wouldn't be surprised to see what the Quips can do this year. 
Yeah, that'll be one to look out for. I know that you talked about we did have a few other teams that we did talk about that have playoff games. I'm not sure if we have the graphic in there, but I have it written down. Uh, Alder Dice will face off against McDowell in a playoff game. And then Berlin Brothers Valley, who we've seen a couple times this year, they are going to face off against Westinghouse. These games will be on the 11th. So uh, Berlin Brothers Valley have been amazing all year. I mean, Uniontown were one of the only teams to take points off of them or to put points up against them at all this year. So, yeah. uh, the, And then Westinghouse have been phenomenal. So two just Goliaths, Goliaths of teams will be uh, fighting each other. Yeah, I'm interested to see how that one's going to play out. I'm, I mean... We talked numerous times about Berlin Brothers Valley this year, or when they took on Brownsville, oh, and then later Uniontown, and now taking on the City League champion. Uh, Alderdice is in the 2A playoff matchup, up taking on McDowell. Uh, we all saw what happened last week when they took on Butler, or who got eliminated from the playoffs first round on, so it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, definitely going to keep an eye on the O's as they make their way through the PIAA matchups. Uh, and then wait for the winners of who comes out of the whip you because it's gonna be a while before we find out that one yeah i mean there's just so many great games uh that are um that are going to be available for us this week i'm really excited to to just like dig my teeth into these uh these scores and able to watch a couple of these games hopefully um uh time allowing and just uh just check it out because it's going to be a heck of a week this week yeah uh, i agree so before we go, folks, it is November, which means it is Military Appreciation Month. So oh, I'm decked out here with my salute to service jacket on, and I just want to say thank you to the men and women that serve across the country and overseas right now. Uh, I have a few veterans that have served in my family, including my dad, Jeff, and my stepfather, Jerry. I want to say hey, thank you to you guys, and I say hey, thank you to everyone that chooses to serve or currently in that are, are overseas right now. So, oh, with that, at, we're going to end the show here. So, oh, <clears throat> th thanks to our crew inside the booth, my co-host, John Sape. So, guys, we'll see you next week with our next round of playoffs, off matchups, and see how all, all the local teams in the area do. For high school roundup, I'm John Sakaguchi. Take care, everyone.